Good morning, students. It is Wednesday, November 18th, and today we are doing our last Greek myth for this week, uh, and it is Pygmalion and Galatea. So let us take a look at what we're doing, and then we are going to talk about our exit ticket after that. So if you look, Wednesday, November 18th, you've got a warm up having to do with Orpheus and Eurydice from yesterday. And then we have our video lesson, which is what you're watching. And then here's our Greek myth, Pygmalion and Galatea, and you'll be filling out the myth analysis worksheet again, just like you did on Monday and Tuesday, okay? So we'll do this. Here's the text and we'll get reading. All right, I'm gonna zoom in just a hair. There we go. Pygmalion and Galatea. Pygmalion saw so much to blame in women that he at last came to abhor hate, the sex and resolved to live unmarried. He was a sculptor and had made with wonderful skill a statue of ivory, so beautiful that no living woman came anywhere near it. It was indeed the perfect semblance of a maiden that seemed to be alive and only prevented from moving by modesty. His art was so perfect that it concealed itself and its product looked like the workmanship of nature. Pygmalion admired his own work and at last fell in love with this counterfeit creation. Oftentimes he laid his hand upon it as if to assure himself whether it was living or not. And he could not even then believe it was only ivory. He caressed it. He gave it presents such as young girls love, bright shells and polished stones, little birds and flowers of various hues, beads and amber. He put raiment clothes on its limbs and jewels on its fingers and a necklace upon its neck. To the ears he hung earrings and strings of pearls upon the crest. Her dress became her and she looked not less charming than when unattired. He laid her on a couch spread with cloths of Tyrian dye and called her his wife. And he put her head upon a pillow of the softest feathers so she, as if she could enjoy the softness. The festival of Venus was at hand, a festival celebrated with great pomp at Cyprus. Victims were offered, the altar smoked, the odor of incense filled the air. Pygmalion had performed his part in the solemnities. He stood before the altar and timidly said, ye gods, who cannot, who can do all things, give you, give me, excuse me, ye gods, who can do all things, Give me, I pray you, for my wife. He dared not say my ivory virgin, but instead he said, one like my ivory virgin. Venus, who was present at the festival, heard him and knew he thought he would have, knew the thought he would have uttered. And as an omen of her favor, caused the flame on the altar to shoot up thrice in a fiery point into the air. When he returned home, he went to see his statue and leaning over the couch, gave a kiss to the mouth. It seemed to be warm. He pressed his lips again and yielded, laid his hand upon the limbs. The ivory so felt soft to his touch and yielded to his fingers like the wax of Hymettus. While he stands astonished and glad, though doubting and fears he may be mistaken, again and again with lover's ardor, he touches the object of his hopes. It was indeed alive. The veins when pressed yielded to the finger and again resumed their roundness. Then at last the votary of Venus found words to thank the goddess and pressed his lips upon lips as real as his own. The virgin felt the kisses and blushed and opened, opening her timid eyes to the light fixed them at the same moment on her lover. Venus blessed the nuptials she had formed and from this union pathos was born from whom the city, sacred to Venus, received its name. All right, so this is a much shorter one, and we're going to be filling out the myth analysis worksheet for this myth as well. And um, again, remember that there's not always a natural phenomena, but sometimes you can find one. Um, there's one here. And um, you also remember that there is going to be a punishment or reward, it doesn't have to be both. Yesterday in Orpheus and Eurydice, there was a reward and then a punishment. But remember, they don't always have both. There is a primary conflict in here for sure. And then what I'd like you to do is to, to the best of your ability, try to find those keywords like character names, 
um, places and verbs. So, Pygmalion is an important word. Galatea is an important word. I would say sculpture or statue, ivory. Um, so there are going to be some words that, that are really important in there that you're going to want to use when you are writing your summary. Okay. And then for your exit ticket today, I'm going to go back to full screen. Stop share. There I am. Hi. Uh, for your exit ticket today, you will be... Um, talking to me about which of the three myths you prefer. So you're going to tell me, did you prefer um, Echo and Narcissus, Orpheus and Eurydice, or today's myth, which is Pygmalion and Galatea? And then you're going to tell me using one of our elements of mythology why you liked it. So you're going to say, I preferred Pygmalion and Galatea because I really liked the conflict in it. Or I really liked Echo and Narcissus because I liked that there were two very obvious natural elements that were explained or natural phenomena that were explained. Um, or you could say that I thought the reward and punishment in Orpheus and Eurydice was really interesting. So I want you to um, tell me which myth you preferred and then also talk to me about one of the ele elements of mythology when you're telling me why you enjoyed it, okay? This will be in the exit ticket and I'll have those directions, but exit ticket today. There's not a right answer. There is only a correct way to fully answer the question, right? So make sure that you're telling me which myth that you preferred out of the three and then why using those elements of mythology. Or another one could be, um, you could also mention that you liked Echo and Narcissus because you found it easy to summarize. That one I'm okay with too. Um, but yeah, that's it. That's all we got for today. And tomorrow we are going to talk about theme for these three myths. And then we're also going to talk about what we're going to be starting uh, once we're in full DL and we're after Thanksgiving break. Okay. Have a great day. Bye.